St James's Place is an award-winning UK wealth manager. It has a very loyal client base, presumably because it provides those clients with a very high quality of service. But there have been persistent questions about the very high level of fees paid by St James's Place clients. So to find out more about those fees and also the services that St James's Place provides, let's see that in a bit more detail. This is not a recommendation. If you want advice tailored to your specific circumstances, seek independent financial advice. Let's start by looking at what exactly we mean by the word wealth manager. There are two types of wealth manager. An advisory manager will simply give you their advice about how to invest. And then the actual choices in what you buy and sell are really left up to you. Whereas a discretionary wealth manager will do everything for you. They'll decide which funds to buy and they'll go ahead and do those trades and construct your portfolio for you. St James's Place's business model is aimed at producing the best possible outcome, in other words, the best returns, for its clients. And that means that they're trying to maximise their clients' wealth. The human face of St James's Place, if you're one of their clients, is a partner. They're the person that's going to manage your relationship with St James's Place and speak to you about your individual needs and try and match those needs to their products. The way St James's Place makes money is to increase its funds under management. The more funds it controls, the more profit it's going to make. And St James's Place says that their dual goal is to provide value for both their clients, but also for their shareholders. Now, the number of partners which they have is over 4,000 as of 2019. And that group of advisors is collectively termed the partnership. And they're the ones who are directly responsible for delivering St James's Place's services to their clients. Now, St James's Place doesn't manage its own money. Instead, it says that it has a radical and effective solution to investing, which is to outsource management of its funds to third-party fund managers. And St James's Place puts a lot of resources into finding fund managers of outstanding ability. The selection of fund managers is done primarily by the St James's Place Investment Committee, which doesn't consist of just St James's Place employees, but also independent members. And you can see those independent members in 2019 on this page. Between them, they have a huge amount of investment experience and bring a great deal of knowledge about fund management to the selection process. Once they find a manager which they like, they tend to stay with them for a very long period of time. But if it does look like the fund manager is underperforming, then they can always go to somebody else to do a better job. And St James's Place believes this gives them access to the very best talent globally. And here are some of those relationships that they have with fund managers. And some of these strategies, indicated by the red lines, are exclusive to St James's Place clients. St James's Place regularly wins awards for wealth management. So you can see they've won Best High Net Worth Team, Best Wealth Planning Team, Best Wealth Manager for a Growth Portfolio, and Best Wealth Advisor Personality of the Year for Ian Gascoigne in 2019. These are their mid-year results in 2019, which are very impressive. You can see that their gross inflow of funds, remember they make their money by increasing the funds that they have under management, and that was 7.4 billion in 2019, which is down slightly on 2018. Once they have customers on board, the customers tend to stay with St James's Place. Or in other words, they find that their client money is very sticky, with a 96% retention of client funds. And from an investor perspective, they pay out a fairly healthy dividend. The dark green bars are the year-end dividends and their light green bars are the interim dividends. And as their revenue has increased, they've increased that payout fairly steadily for at least a decade. And that's great news for their investors. In the interim statement, they spell out their financial model very clearly. As we saw, the funds under management are the key indicator of their success. The more money that they manage, the greater their revenue. Management fees are their principal source of income. And they also generate income through an initial margin on new business. However, half of the money that comes through the door doesn't generate cash immediately. In fact, it takes six years to do so. And they describe that as funds being in gestation. If they do manage to keep the cash on the books for six years, it matures from gestation and becomes cash generative. And as the amount of wealth increases in Asia, they're clearly trying to expand in the Far East. 
and they go on to describe that gestation period in greater detail, saying that their unit trust and ISA business begins contributing positively to the cash flow from day one, but the investment and pensions business is the cash that needs to enter this gestation period, after which it starts contributing positively to the bottom line. And here's the breakdown of the mature funds under management, which are already contributing to the cash results of the company. And here's the gestation funds under management, which will contribute to the cash result in the future. So what do St. James's Place customers think about their service? In a promotional video, which admittedly was created by St. James's Place itself, which you can find on YouTube, the feedback is extremely positive. And what's interesting is that the interviewees say that they know that the products aren't the cheapest on the market, but they didn't want the cheapest product. They wanted the best service. And as long as they receive that service, then the payment is a secondary consideration. And another client says that the advice I've received is priceless. Cost doesn't come into it because I never even think about the cost. This client is willing to pay whatever it costs to get the peace of mind to live the type of lifestyle that they want at the moment. So it looks like their customers are completely price insensitive. Their key goal is to have someone provide them with a high quality service. St. James's Place prides themselves on the ability to select good funds. So let's see how well those funds are performed. Regular viewers of my channel will be familiar with this table, which is produced by Standard & Poor's. It's the S&P Indices versus Active Funds report. And what it shows, year after year, is that active funds consistently underperform their benchmarks. And that's true for the vast majority of active managers. These are the percentages which underperform their benchmark. And that suggests that in these cases, clients would have been better off with a much cheaper passive tracker of that benchmark. And the statistics are shocking for some particular types of fund. So for example, UK sterling global equity funds underperform in 92% of the cases over a 10 year period. And that suggests it's extremely difficult to find a fund which will outperform. So St. James's Place has its work cut out for it. In this article from Money Marketing in March 2018, they showed that only two of the 26 funds offered by St. James's Place had outperformed their benchmarks over a one and five year time frame. And over a one and five year time frame, 10 of the 26 funds underperformed. And that doesn't demonstrate a spectacular ability to select outperforming active funds. A more recent report, which is Best Invest's Spot the Dog report, where dog is a colloquial term for an underperforming fund, and which Tilney describes as the guide fund managers would love to ban. Clearly, fund managers don't want to be in this report. They define a dog fund as one which has failed to beat the benchmark over three consecutive 12-month periods. And a dog fund also has to underperform the benchmark by 5% or more over the entire three-year period. Unfortunately, St. James's Place is a regular name in the Spot the Dog report, and in 2019, it had four funds in the list. It also points out that the funds which are on the dog list have some of the highest ongoing costs of those featured in Spot the Dog. And at the time of this report, St. James's Place had $3.84 billion in underperforming dog fund assets. The difficulty of finding a fund manager which has a good track record and which continues to have a good track record is illustrated with Neil Woodford. In May 2019, the Chief Investment Officer of St. James's Place, Chris Ralph, came out with a statement confirming the confidence of St. James's Place in Neil Woodford and his ability to manage his clients' money. And he pointed out the exceptional returns that Neil Woodford had generated over the past 30 years, and his proven long-term investment philosophy, and stated that St. James's Place had no plans to change Woodford's mandate. Then on June the 3rd, 2019, Woodford gated his equity income fund, which meant that clients could no longer pull their money out of that fund. Now, the fund that Woodford managed for St. James's Place didn't suffer from many of the problems that the Woodford Equity Income Fund did. And in particular, St. James's Place had insisted that it not contain unlisted equity. Nonetheless, St. James's Place took away Woodford's mandate for its funds, ending a relationship which had lasted almost two decades. Woodford had been underperforming for a few years before this happened, but it took gating of the fund in order for St. James's Place to drop his management mandate. One thing to bear in mind 
is that St. James's Place offers restricted advice. And that means that they can't choose from all of the thousands of funds which are available to you and I. St. James's Place partners will always sell you a St. James's Place fund. The consumer magazine Which Money carried out an investigation where they had 12 undercover meetings with advisors from St. James's Place. And what they uncovered was that some of the advisors didn't tell them that the advice was restricted, which is something that the Financial Conduct Authority has made a legal requirement. If you ask an advisor whether they're restricted, they have to tell you if they offer restricted advice. They also found that there wasn't complete transparency on the part of the advisors when talking about the fees for St. James's Place products. And it's definitely worth talking about the fees for St. James's Place. In July 2019, Sunday Times Money showed that with a fairly standard portfolio, St. James's Place fees could cost you a million pounds for a million pounds invested. So what they assumed was a one million pound pot growing at 6% a year, and they showed that for a Hargreaves Lansdowne client, investors would lose about a quarter of their gains over a period of 10 years, and a St. James's Place client would lose about 43% if they held the most popular of St. James's Place portfolios, which is their balanced portfolio. Over a 20-year period, the losses were even more staggering. Hargreaves Lansdowne clients would have paid away about a third of their gains in fees, whereas St. James's Place customers would have paid away almost half of their gains as fees. If you want to try out these calculations for yourself, it's very easy. Just go to Larry Bates's T-Rex score website, enter the amount you're investing, your assumed annual return, which in this case was 6%, your annual fees, which I think for St. James's Place were taken to be 1.95%, and the period of time over which you'll be investing. Then just click on Update. The T-Rex score tells you what percentage of the gains you get to keep, which in this case was just 55%. Almost a million had been lost in fees. The reason why this is so shocking for most people is that a 2% annual fee doesn't sound like much. But of course, fees compound over time, just like returns. And when you compound 2% over a period of 20 years, it gobbles up a large proportion of your 6% return. And when couched in these terms, perhaps those clients which weren't bothered about the price of advice might be bothered after all. The fund management site Yodelar has also done an analysis of St. James's Place charges. They say that the initial fee is 5% of the amount you invest, which would put it at the very highest end of independent financial advisors. The annual management charges for ongoing advice is around 1.5 to 1.7% for unit trusts and ISAs. The transaction charges would add another 1%, And if you take your money out before six years is up on a pension and investment bond product, then you're also hit with an exit fee. And if you add money to that pension or investment bond product, the six-year clock is reset for that portion of the investment. When you combine these fees, it means new investors can pay over 7% of the amount they invest in fees in the first year. Now let's look at those exit fees in a bit more detail. Whoops, I said exit fees. St. James's Place calls it an early withdrawal charge. This is how it's described on their website. It describes the reducing scale over a period of six years, starting with 6% in year one and reducing to 1% in year six. The editor of CityWire's new model advisor, who's a pretty smart guy called William Robbins, admits that even he struggled to understand St. James's Place's explanation of their early withdrawal charge. And he points out that it's a good thing it's not an exit charge because the regulator, which is the Financial Conduct Authority, clamped down on exit charges on pension policies in 2015, banning any charges over 1% for people over 55. And when the FCA finally clamped down on exit charges, Kate Beerley in the FT pointed out that St. James's Place were likely to escape unscathed because of their so-called vertically integrated structure. And vertically integrated means that they sell their own funds on their own platform. And because of that, they can call their exit fee, sorry, their early withdrawal charge, a product-related fee rather than an exit fee. It may be that legislation changes in future to avoid that happening, but it certainly seems that for now, that early withdrawal charge will stay in place, ensuring that St. James's Place's gestation period is likely to reach full term for its client's money. So to summarise, I have some questions of my own. My first question is why all of St. James's Place's funds are actively managed. 
where the overwhelming evidence shows that for most investors, a passive fund will outperform net of fees for the vast majority of clients. I also don't understand this combination of high fees and happy clients. I'd like to think that the clients are happy because they receive such an amazing service from St. James's Place. And the evidence is that the service is very good. But my worry is that many clients are happy because they don't understand how much they're being charged and what percentage of their investment gains are being paid to St. James's Place. I'd also question whether the compensation structure for partners is aligned with the idea of them being fiduciaries. And a fiduciary is a personal entity which acts in the best interests of its clients. Can you really marry that combination of acting in the best interests of your clients and in the best interests of your shareholders? I also dislike the fact that St. James's Place is utterly committed to the concept of the alpha cult, which is the idea that certain people can outperform the market because of their high intelligence and their insight and that they can do so consistently over decades. And secondly, that it's possible to identify those people based on past performance. The only variation for St. James's Place is that instead of choosing assets, they can choose funds which outperform. And as we saw in the case of Woodford, past performance isn't a guide to future performance, which makes identification of fund managers which can outperform extremely difficult. Just as difficult, in fact, as choosing equities which will outperform the broad market. So if we are entering an environment with lower returns of maybe 6% per year, then a fee of 2% could easily gobble up those returns. And it may be that under that new regime, St. James's Place's fee structure is simply inappropriate. Now, if you want to see more of these objective reviews, they're objective because I'm funded by you and not by platforms. So to support us, it's very easy. Just click on the Patreon button above and then you can just pay $5 a month to get access to our Slack channel and also our friendly evening sessions on a Sunday where you can ask anything you like and I'll do my best to answer it. And on the Slack channel, you can also ask questions of the other Pension Craft community members who are very helpful. If you pay $15 a month, you get a power hour with me every other month and it's one to one and we can talk about any topics you like in finance. But remember, I don't provide financial advice. I provide financial education. And as always, thank you for listening.